Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about most common orthopedic injury leading to hemorrhage and death in all type of road traffic accidents. So we are talking about pelvic trauma. It's a very emergency injury which needs a very delicate management to stabilize the patient and within a few maybe within a few minutes or within a few hour the patient may die due to hypovolemic shock if not managed properly so let's talk about pelvic fractures and its classification but before talking about classification we will go through pelvic anatomy so we talk about pelvic anatomy the pelvis is formed by two innominate bone and one sacrum two innominate bones are anteriorly and sacrum is posterior so these innominate bones are formed by three other bone which fuse together to form acetabulum and innominate bone itself these are pubic bone ilium bone and ischium bone so these three bones come together to form an acetabulum to form an innominate bone now two innominate bones come anteriorly and join to form pubic symphysis and posteriorly they articulate with sacrum and then they form the pelvic ring so the pelvic ring is formed by innominate bone and sacrum now what are the the integrity of this pelvic structure so if you go from anterior to posterior the pubic symphysis is stabilized by pubis anteriorly these two bones come together to form pubic symphysis and then the second layer of ligament is formed by the pelvic floor ligaments these are sacrospinous ligament and sacrotubular ligament these two bones stabilize the sacrum with the pubis part sacroiliac and sacrotubular ligament hold the sacrum with the pelvis to create a stability and the third layer of stability come from sacro iliac ligaments these are anterior sacro iliac ligament interosseous sacro iliac ligament and posterior sacro iliac ligament so these are the three layer of ligaments coming from anterior to posterior pubic symphysis and its ligament then sacro spinous and sacro tuberous ligament then sacro iliac ligament anterior interosseous and posterior now i hope now you understand the anatomy of pelvis its bony anatomy bony part then the ligament which are responsible to stabilize the pelvic structures so whenever injury happens these ligamentous or bony structure get disrupted leading to pelvic fractures or pelvic injuries now let's talk about classification of pelvic fracture so there are three major classification for pelvic fracture first one is tiles classification second one is jones and burgers classification and then third one is world society for emergency surgery classification system so let's type talk about tile system so tile system is divided into tile 1 tile 2 and tile 3 so if you, you can imagine this is a pelvis okay so this is a pelvis which is posteriorly stabilized and anteriorly this is a pubic symphysis now what is happening in tile 1 the fracture is stable so there is a fracture of pelvic pubic bone or ilium bone or any part of pubis pelvic pelvic ring but the stability is there so the pelvis when you compress the pelvis in a pelvic compression test there is a no instability so all ligaments are intact maybe there are some bony injury which is not involving the pelvic ring that is a tile for now second then second tile 2 is there is rotational instability but no vertical instability so what is rotational instability that pelvic get rotated open up like this so from anterior to posterior so it's a rotational instability and when pelvis moves proximal okay when pelvis moves proximal or distal so it's a vertical instability so this is a rotational instability when so it's open up or so it gets opened up or get displaced like this it's a rotational instability and when pelvic move proximal or distal then it is a vertical instability so tile 1 when there is no 
instability. Pelvis is stable even though there is a fracture, but it is stable. And tile two is when there is a rotational instability, but no vertical instability. So vertically it is stable, but rotationally it's opening up. So there are ligamentous injuries of the pelvis, which letting the pelvis open in a one particular rotation, one particular direction that is in rotation, but it doesn't allow the pelvis to move in a vertical direction. That is tile two. Now the tile three is when there is a rotational instability as well as vertical instability. So rotational and vertical instability is tile three pelvic injury. So tile one is a stable pelvis with some fracture, but the ring is stable. Tile two is rotational instability with no vertical instability, and tile three is vertical as well as rotational instability. This is a tile classification. Now, if we talk about Young's and Berger's classification system, it is based on mechanism of injury. It can be three types. First one is anterior posterior compression. Anterior, if it is anterior, anterior posterior compression. The second one is lateral compression, and then vertical seal. So these are the three types of Young's and Berger's classification system for pelvic injury. Now, if we talk about Young and Berger's classification, in which the compression, when the compression is happening from anterior to posterior, so when something is hitting the pelvis from anterior, then there is an injury to the pelvis. So the force opens up from anterior to posterior. So there is a first there is a disruption of anterior ligament and gradually it opens the pelvis like a book. So open book injuries are mostly a part of APC injury. So either the pelvic symphysis will open up first, then pelvic floor ligaments like sacroiliac ligament or sacrotubulus ligament will give up. Then only the pelvis will open start opening starts. And then when the posterior sacroiliac ligament or anterior sacroiliac ligament it disturbs, the gravity of injury increases. So if that all these are part of anterior posterior injury. When the lateral compression happens, when pelvis get hit from side, from side. So what the something hit from side, then what happens? Then there is rotational instability that pelvis either get fractured from the sacro sacroiliac joint or some fracture from the superior and inferior pubic lamina, or it opens from the pubic symphysis. So when the, when the compression is from lateral side, so all so the opening is not as from anterior to posterior as in APC injury, it's get complex. So either wing get uh, some displacement in the rotation or sacrum get fractured. So this is lateral compression injury. It's the most common type of pelvic injuries and in which the urethra or bladder injuries are common. Now the vertical shear is when all these ligaments are gone and the pelvis is unstable. This type of injury happens when somebody falls from height and hits something in between. Then the pelvis gets vertically displaced like this. So somebody is falling and the pelvis hits something and then vertical shear happens. This is a vertical shear classification for Young's and Burgess. So in this injury, all type of ligament has to disrupt from anterior to posterior to get this type of injury. Okay. So now Young's and Burgess classification in the sort that anterior posterior classification for Jensen Berger, the injury happens from anterior to posterior. So it's the injuries, the travel of force is from anterior to posterior. So the disruption of ligament is always from anterior to posterior and pelvic open like this. That's an open book injury. In lateral compression, the pelvis override each other. The innominate bone and the sacrum get compressed. So either they get fractured or they get compressed. So this is not basically a ligamentous injury. Mostly it's a fracture of bone or fracture of bone, okay? And third one is vertical shear when the, all the ligaments are gone due to the foot, uh, due to one innominate bone, one part of pelvis get hit or get uh, get some that get high velocity injuries, and then all the ligament disrupt simultaneously to shift it vertically. Okay, that's that's why the vertical shear fractures are rare but are very dangerous, and they are mostly associated with the very high volume blood loss and uh, mortality. Now, the third type of classification system is World Society of Emergency Surgery classification. So, as we know, the time classification was based on anatomy of pelvis. The Williams and Berger classification was based on mechanism of injuries of the pelvis injuries. These things help us to decide how what is the prognosis of the patient. But the third one is the third one. This classification system is talk about the management of the patient. 
so how they are going to manage the patient based on the classification of the injuries in a pelvic structure so now world society of emergency surgery classification talks about the management of the patient so it also incorporate the fracture classification that is young's and berger but it basically help us to make a decision that how we are going to manage the patient in this classification it has been classified in minor moderate and severe pelvic injury so in one so that is minor pelvic injury the fracture is stable and patient is also hemodynamically stable so a stable pelvic fracture with stable patient is a minor pelvic injury as per ws ES classification. When moderate uh, type of World Society of Emergency Surgery classification is when the pelvic is instable. So pelvic injury is a great severe grade that either it is vertically instable or it is anterior posteriorly instable. So the rotational instability is there, but the patient is stable. So it is a moderate type of injury. And the severe type of injury, irrespective of pelvic stability, the patient is hemodynamically instable. So in those cases, we need to put some emergency measures to save the patients. So this is how the, the World Society of Emergency Surgery, the World Society of Emergency Surgery classifications help us to scrutinize the patient who was hemodynamically unstable, who are going to need uh, immediate measurements to save the patient's life. So this was all about pelvic fractures and its classifications. Hope it may, I made it simple for you. See you. Bye bye.